All right, now that we know what the real numbers are, <clears throat> let's learn about some properties that we can use to simplify and solve equations and do other things that we need to be able to do with these numbers. All right, we're going to start out with the identity property for addition, um, also known as the additive identity. So basically this says that there's a number that exists that if I add it to any number, that it will equal itself. So 5 plus 0 equals 5. 7 plus 0 equals 7. Alright, and this will work for any number. A plus 0 is going to equal A. And any number we can plug in for A. So 0 is the additive identity. Okay, 0 is the one that you're going to add to any number so it equals itself. <clears throat> Multiplication has an identity as well. All right, it's not the same number. 5 times this number will equal itself. Okay, if we use 0 here, 5 times 0 equals 0, not 5. Okay, so the, no the multiplicative identity, the number that you multiply and it stays the same, is 1. 5 times 1 equals 5. 7 times 1 equals 7. So for any number A, if we multiply it by 1, it's going to equal itself. So 1 is the multiplicative identity. All right, you have to know those before you can do the inverses. So now let's do the inverses. The inverse says that if I add, some, if I add a number to this, it's going to equal the identity. Well, for addition, it's, that means it needs to equal 0. So what number can I add to 5 so it equals 0? All right, well, that's going to be the opposite of 5, negative 5. All right, what number do I have to add to 7 to equal 0? Well, it's going to be negative 7, all right, because those, those two are going to cancel each other out. Okay, so what number would I have to add to A? You need to add negative A, so it equals the identity. So negative A is your additive inverse. All right, multiplication, we can do the same thing. Um, 5 times what number will equal 1? All right, this is definitely the trickiest one because we want to say negative 5 like it was up here but that would equal negative 25, so that's not what we want. Okay, really what we want is if you divide, 5 divided by 5 would equal 1, but we're multiplying instead of dividing, so uh, multiplying by a fraction is the same as dividing by a whole number. So if I want to divide by 5, then I should multiply by 1 fifth. So 5 times 1 fifth equals 1. 7 times 1 seventh equals 1. So a, any number a, if we multiply it by 1 over a, it's going to equal the identity for multiplication, which is 1. Okay, 1 over a has a name. It's called the reciprocal. Anytime you multiply a number and you flip it over, that's called the reciprocal. So a is a over 1, and we flip it over, make it 1 over a. That's the reciprocal. Multiplying by the reciprocal will always equal 1, all right, no matter what the number is. Okay? All right, let's try a couple examples down here. I want you to find the additive and multiplicative inverse of each number. So give these uh, two a shot on your own, pause the video, and then uh, unpause it and see if you came up with the right numbers. All right, so for 12, the additive inverse, we need to cancel out 12 and make it equal 0. So 12 is a. So negative 12 would be the additive inverse. All right, multiplying, we need to find the reciprocal. 12 is a, so we need to flip it over, make it 1 over 12. All right, over here, a little tougher, gave it, got an improper fraction here. It's also a negative. So the additive inverse, um, negative 9 fourths is a, so we need to do the opposite. So this is like a double negative. It's negative negative, which makes it a positive. All right, just always do the opposite sign for additive. So that's positive 9 fourths. All right, and multiplicative. We need to do the reciprocal. And notice um, there's no negative, so the negative stays there. All right, so we have negative 9 fourths is A, and negative 4 ninths is the multiplicative. And think about it. We want it to equal positive 1, right? Well, if the a is a negative, then the reciprocal needs to also be a negative. So the negative times a negative cancels out to equal positive 1. All right, so never uh, leave the negative off on the multiplicative inverses. That's always going to stay there. 
All right, let's talk about a couple other properties here. I'm going to skip over this closure property. We don't really need to talk about that one. Um, let's do associative property. All right, this requires three different letters, A plus B plus C. So um, we use parentheses usually to associate things. All right, and the associative property basically says that I can associate A plus B and have plus C, and that's going to equal, be the same thing as if I were to associate B plus C and leave A out. So you can move those parentheses around and reassociate in any way that you want, and it's always going to come out equal. Okay, it works for multiplication too, so I can do A times B times C, or I can do A times B times C. And that's going to be the same thing. All right, commutative property. This says if you have two numbers that are being added together, you're allowed to switch them and add them this way. And that's going to be the same thing. Okay, works for multiplication as well. A times B is the same as B times A. Okay, notice that we're only talking addition and multiplication right now. These properties do not work with subtraction or division. Okay, so you got to be real careful. All right, now we can change subtraction into an addition problem by doing plus a negative, and then we can use the property. We can change division into a multiplication problem by multiplying by the reciprocal, and then we can use these properties. So there's ways to get around the subtraction and division thing, but if you're using those subtraction and division signs, you can't use these properties, so be careful about that. All right, last one's the distributive property. This one's kind of a combination of addition and multiplication. So it says if I have A being multiplied by B, plus C, then I can distribute the A and multiply it by each one separately, A times B plus A times C. And those are going to be the same thing. All right, you're probably very familiar with the distributive property from your Algebra 1 class and did it in geometry as well. All right, so down here, I want you to take a look at these examples and try to come up with which property each one represents. Okay, again, pause the video, try these on your own, unpause, see if you got it right. All right, so this first one, um, we have 2 times 3.9, and then they switched around, 3.9 times 2. Okay, that looks a lot like the commutative property. A times B equals B times A. So this one is commutative. All right, second one. We have uh, three things here, a 3, a 2, and a square root of 8. So the first one, we have the 3 on the outside, and then 2 times square root of 8 are being associated. And then in the other one, we have 3 times 2 being associated with the square root of 8. So that's the associative property of multiplication. A times B times C equals A times B times C. All right, next one. This is a little tricky because um, all of a sudden these parentheses show up over here and we didn't have them over here. And usually in my brain, when I see parentheses, I'm thinking associative because that's where we move the parentheses around. But this one's not associative. If you take a closer look, um, it's 9 times the square root of 2. And then they just switched around, square root of 2 times 9. So this is actually the commutative property. All right, and the last one looks like we've got 9 times 12 pi and then 9 times 12 times pi. So they reassociated. This one had 12 pi associated. This one has 9 and 12. So this is, again, the associative property. All right, the reason these uh, properties are important is because we need to be able to do things like simplify an algebraic expression. Okay, later on in the unit, we'll um, solve some algebraic equations, and that uses these properties extensively as well. So you need to be pretty well versed in them and know what you can do and what you're not allowed to do. All right, so to simplify this, we basically want to combine everything that has an X and combine everything that has a Y. So we just have one term of X's and one term of Y's. Okay, we can't just do that straight away because we have these numbers on the outside. So the first thing we need to do is use the distributive property. So we're going to distribute the 3 in there, and we're going to distribute the negative 2. Notice it's a minus sign, so that goes with it in there. All right, when you do this, you multiply. So this is 3 times 4x, which is 12x. 3 times negative 2y is negative 6y. 
negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x, and negative 2 times y is negative 2y. All right, next, we need to combine like terms. So anything that's an x, we're allowed to add together. Now, the 12x and the negative 6x are not next to each other, okay? But because we know about the commutative property, we know that we can rearrange these in any order we want. Now, normally we don't waste another line writing it out in the right order, but just for the sake of seeing the property in action, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna keep the 12x there, but I'm gonna rearrange, I'm gonna switch these two. All right, using the commutative property, it says I'm allowed to do that. So negative 6x, and then negative 6y, and then negative 2y. All right, and now that these are sitting right here next to each other, we can easily see that we can combine those together. 12 minus 6 is 6x, and negative 6y minus 2y is negative 8y. One term of x's, one term of y's, that's as far as we can simplify those. All right, y'all give the next one a try on your own. Pause the video. Um, come back when you think you've got it. And see if you see how you did. All right, so on this one, we're going to have to do the distributive property here with the 3. Um, we're also going to have to distribute here with the 5. Okay, notice that this minus 7 is hanging out, out here. That We don't distribute that anywhere. There's no parentheses attached to it. It's not being multiplied. Okay, also another common mistake that I see is uh, people want to add these two numbers together, negative 7 plus 5, put negative 2, and then distribute negative 2. Remember, you can't do that. We uh, talked about order of operations in our previous lesson. Okay, um, the multiplying, which is what we're doing with the 3 and the 5, comes before adding, which is what you would be doing with the negative 7 and the 5. Okay, so you have to multiply, distribute before you can combine like terms and add. All right, so 3 times 2q is 6q. 3 times r is 3r. We saw that minus 7, so don't forget. 5 times 4q is 20q. And 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. All right, I'm not going to use another line to rearrange these, but you know that we can because of the commutative property. I'm just going to combine like terms from here. 6q plus 20q is 26q. Um, 3r, looks like there are no other r's, so we'll just bring that down here. And then negative 7 minus 35 is negative 42. One term of q's, one term of r's, one term of constants. Um, no variable attached, so that's the constant term. Nothing else we can do that's fully simplified, so there's your answer.